Hello everybody, this is Tekka. In this video, what I'm going to be doing is talking about app images and a wonderful way to go ahead and download and manage them. Now this right here is App Image Pool. This is the application that we are going to be discussing in this video. Uh, but before we dive too much into that, just quickly on the app images. What are they? Essentially, they're just a one of the couple different forms of containerized applications in Linux. They do work a little bit differently. They, If you're somebody who comes from Windows, the best way I can kind of describe or compare these to something is they're a lot like a portable EXE that some Windows applications ship with or some Windows applications ship with that they don't want to ship that way. Now, there are a lot of benefits to using app image. A lot of times it has uh, almost the same or very similar performance when comparing it to a natively installed application. But to me, one of the best reasons to use app images is to have different versions of the same application on your system. If you're somebody who uses Linux and uses FOSS applications particularly, you may notice that sometimes features break. Um, I'm mostly pointing fingers at Caden Live after certain software updates. So it's always good to be able to use something like this to go back a version really easily. So right here, this is app image pool. All the app images, it's just gonna go ahead and pull from the app image hub. But right here, installing it's pretty easy. There are a couple different methods. The uh, preferred seems to be flat packages, which is kind of funny. Uh, but of course, you can get an app image of this app image store. Uh, for me, I'm gonna be using flat pack because I'm on a, a pretty weird Linux distribution at the moment. I'm currently running uh, Clear Linux, which isn't really designed for my use case, but I'm trying it out anyway. And this seems to have a, or it does have a very heavy leaning on flat packages. So what I'm gonna do is just go over to their store. Of course, you could install this any other way you would install flat packages. There's the command there. And of course, you could go ahead and just get the app image of it. But I'm just gonna go here, let's search up app. There it is, app image pool. Let's go ahead and give that a quick install. And there we go, it's installed. That was almost as quick as uh, setting up your very own instance over on the node, which happens to be the sponsor of today's video. Anything that you need a Linux server for, they are for you. They have easy one-click installs, so it takes away a lot of the work that you have to do. So with a simple click, you could have a Minecraft server up and running, uh, for instance. They have fantastic customer support. You talk to real people. Overall, it's a good deal. I've been using them for quite some time for TechCut.tv, and if you use the link in the description, you'll get a $100 60-day credit. Basically, if you don't click that link, you are just giving up money. You might as well get that $100 credit, try it out, and chances are you'll love it. So now that it is installed, let's go ahead and go up here, go to our app image pool application, and here we are. It's looking pretty good. We have uh, our featured apps here. If we scroll down, we have all of our different uh, applications within these specific categories. If we go over here, we can explore all these different categories. Now, like I was mentioning earlier, this is a pretty weird Linux distribution. So some of these would be rather difficult for me to get without these app images. Uh, an example of this would be something like the Firefox nightly build here. If we go over here, all we need to do is click on download. It's going to go ahead and download the latest nightly release app image. Just give that a click, hit download. And now if I go ahead, either go up here, you can see it downloading and it's done. So what we could do is go over here under installed applications, you'll see the Firefox nightly build. And then under downloads, you'll see that. Now, if I go under installed, just give this a simple click it's gonna go ahead and open up this app image of this specific version of Firefox. Now, I'm pretty sure that these are just downloaded into, let's go into our home directory, there we go, uh, into this applications folder here. So if I open up applications, you can see the Firefox nightly build app image right here. So that is where they will be downloading. Now this web browser is not one of them, but some app images, when you go ahead and open them up, they may prompt you with a, a little dialogue to go ahead and add better desktop integration. Uh, and that's something that you can do. I'll be linking down below if you want to make these appear as if they're actually installed on your system. Again, app images are never actually installed. They're just a little executable application everything the application actually needs is all built into this one app image. And you saw that it opened up. Um, generally, when you download an app image, you need to go under properties, permissions, and make it executable. 
but it seems like how it downloaded through this, it did that automatically, which is nice. But when I'm talking about desktop integration, for example, if I search up Firefox, it's only gonna show the regular version of Firefox I already have installed on this computer. So that's something to keep note of with these app images. Now, one thing we might as well try to enable this. So I found a little application called App Image Launcher. Let's go ahead and grab the latest app image of this app image launcher. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that right here. A few minutes later. All right, so admittedly, I was just struggling. It has to do with this Linux distribution that application you're just looking at has RPM, Debian, and app image. It just wasn't wanting to work on this system. So I went ahead and created my very own dot desktop. This is an option. Uh, doing it this way will require like manual cleanup if you do remove the application or you sw switch anything around you'll have to go and fix this manually but nano local share applications and i created the firefox nightly dot desktop file and within this desktop entry we have a type application firefox nightly uh, i went ahead and downloaded a uh, the png right here and threw it into an icons directory within this applications folder and this is the execution, so just the path of that app image. False, categories, internet. Went ahead, saved this out, restarted GNOME, and now if I go ahead and type in Firefox, you will see Firefox Nightly there. Hit enter, and now my app image is integrated into the desktop somewhat properly. And obviously, you don't have to do that. You can just go in and do this through here or open up this application that we are taking a look at and actually manage your instances or your applications through here. So whatever you want to do. And again, there are a lot more different applications. We have Inboxer, ScreenCloud, uh, Thunderbird, Waterfox, which is cool. So for example, let's go ahead and grab one of these uh, Waterfox applications. Audacity, I need Audacity. There we go, okay, so it was a Waterfox issue. This application does have some uh, things to be worked on, some improvements that will need to be made. So here's Audacity, a simple click of the download, select it, download it, and it should be good to go. If we go over here, we can check up on the progress. It's already complete. If I give it a click, it should open up without any issues whatsoever. Completely containerized, not actually installed on your system, but here is Audacity in its purest form. And again, if you do want to integrate this, you could create your own .desktop file or use a third-party application to go ahead and do that for you. So that has been the app image pool right here. And it's a pretty nice little application. Again, you could just go ahead and download all this through the, your web browser, but I do like graphical user interfaces on my system that I could go ahead and quickly grab whatever applications I happen to be needing. So that has been the video. All the links and everything I will be mentioned or that I have mentioned will be down below. Uh, with all that, have a beautiful day. Big thank you to our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. As the new year comes around, I'll be having new graphics, new branding and all that. And I will have all the Patreon members on screen. Sorry, I've been slack a lacking. But with that, have a beautiful day and good.